Hey everybody, I'm back with an idea about uh, how to get more sounds out of your kit without necessarily buying more stuff. What I mean by that is normally with an electronic drum kit, you have to buy another trigger so that you can add another sound. But you only have so many inputs. This is the TD30, it has 16 inputs, basically. 15, 16 inputs, depending on how you do it, because there's a mix-in input as well, so that's kind of an extra one, but um, but you can actually get a lot of sounds out of it without buying extra triggers, extra chords, extra brackets and arms and stuff like that. By the way, if you stick around to the end, I have some other ideas about working the mixer as far as volume and panning are concerned, and uh, hopefully you'll like that. Now, for folks that know all this stuff, <clears throat> Good for you. I didn't know you knew it. So, uh, but if you haven't really messed with your brain all that much, if you're one of those drummers that just wants to get, uh, doesn't want to mess with your module, you just want to get into playing, I totally get that. But there are some things that you can do with your module that will really not necessarily improve, improve your playing, but give you a whole lot of extra and fun sounds to work with, again, without adding stuff. So let's talk about it for a little bit. First of all, Many of the triggers uh, that are supplied with kits or that you can buy are dual triggers or three zone triggers. Now the BT-1 is a single zone trigger, meaning uh, you can only put one sound in it, that's it. And you can't hit the edge or the top of the sides or anything and get something else out of it. It's a single zone trigger. The only thing I really like about it is how easy it is to mount them right to another drum so again, you don't have to buy another clamp and another bracket and all that stuff. But if Roland or someone else comes out with a dual trigger like this, where you can get two sounds out of it, you're going to see me selling these online. Feel free to buy them. And I'm going to put them there because it would be great to have two sounds in there rather than just one. Here's another one over here. But that's the only sound I can put in there. Unlike, say, these tom sounds or the cymbals, etc., that you can put two sounds in them each. Now, normally, people put uh, tom sounds in the, in the head, for instance. Here, I'm gonna see if I can show you what it looks like over here. This is a tom sound. And that is actually 365 12-inch loose, the, not the first one, tom one. But in the rim, if you use this, uh, this one right here, H plus R, which means head plus rim, now it's just a single, you have to pick it head or the rim, but this is both. If you end up putting in 365 into there, it's gonna put 366 into your rim, kind of automatically. And it's that rim click sound of that drum. Now the cool thing about it is if you hit a little harder as you heard, you'll get that kind of pang sound of a real drum, right? But you'll still get a rim too, if you hit it lightly. And I kind of like that. I know that there are people who put different sounds in the rim than on the head so they have all these extra sounds but I, I don't I personally don't do that I do other things because I really like that sound you can get rim shots out of it and you get that pang and it's still a click I like that and I like that uh, it has it sounds about as real to a drum as you possibly can rather than a cowbell on the rim or some other crazy thing that you might accidentally hit while you're playing anyway, while you're doing this roundhouse, you hear king right in the middle of it. I really don't like that. Um, of course, you know, the better players won't make any mistakes ever, but I will. So I, I kind of account for that, and I tend to not put extra sounds in that rim. Plus, I like the rim sound. I, I like to be able to have that sound there. Obviously, for the snare drum, when you put the snare in, this one is 166 standard maple. By the way, this kit is called Gut Funk. I don't know, I don't know if it came with it or if I augmented it or whatever. But anyway, I, I like it. You'll have the rim shot sound in the rim, so you can get that when you want to. Right. Let's try a different kit for a second. Silver Chair C2, I guess that's called. Right. So, let's start with the snare. You can actually put extra sounds in your snare, but you have to kind of go into your brain to do it. 
meaning your module. So what you do is you go in here and you could pick this specific instrument and you go to edit. Then this is where you can change all the parameters of this drum. Uh, if, if you're able to, some you're not able to, but you can change this, the, the shell depth and uh, the tuning, the head type and muffling and all that stuff. But here, go to mic add. If you go down to rim sound, you can add a rim sound. Now, there are only so many supplied. You can't just put anything in there, at least not now. And what you do is you use this plus or minus button. And all of a sudden, you can put a tambourine or 909 claps or a gated hit on that. And that's pretty much all you can do, at least with this one in particular. So let's see what that sounds like. Hear that? There it is. And it's right on the rim. It's only on the rim. Add the rim sound. You can also go to the next level and make it louder. Make it a lot louder. Up to three, positive three, or minus three. That's really pronounced. I'm barely dropping my stick onto the rim and it's really there. So it would sound like this. Right? It's only on the rim and it's where you hit it and you still hear the, uh, the snare drum uh, rim shot. But now you'll hear a tambourine on top of it. Right? So I tend to back off that sound just a little bit to maybe zero or plus one because you can go minus as well <clears throat> to make it a little more subtle. But let's just put it in there to make sure you hear it well. Right? It's fun to have it in there to like add an extra punch during a chorus or something like that. And of course, that's not the only sound that's in there. We mentioned the gated uh, 909 claps. Hear that? That's pretty cool too, if you're looking for dance stuff. And here is the kind of Phil Collins gated hit. And of course you can make that louder or softer and you can do that <clears throat> on the rim of any one of your kits and you don't have to have it on all of them. I'm just going to move to another kit. There's a tambourine on that one. There's nothing on that one. So when you get into that kit, you're only messing with the sound of that snare drum in that particular kit. It's not going to change them all, but it's a fun little extra thing to add again without having to buy anything extra. So I'm going to go into that kit and take that off because I hate that. <laughs> so I'm just going to take that off entirely, go down and make that zero. And now it's back to normal. It's just the rim shot. Now, uh, I talked in another uh, video about hi-hats and about how you can have two hi-hats a kit. There's one over here. By the way, I'm using a CY... H, I think they're called. Let me say, they, they don't really make these anymore. <laughs> but it's a CYH, and it's a, it's a, it's made to be a static hi hat. It's not two pieces that opens up. It's just one side. And I bought another one and put it over here. And now I have two hi hats on both sides of my kit, so to speak, controlled by one pedal. And that's a whole other thing uh, you can look at in the other video. I think it's at the end of one of the other videos. But what's also nice about the hi-hats is when you split them this way in a TD-30 or a TD-50, it isn't just one hi-hat twice. It's two different hi-hat sounds. I'll show you. You might not be able to tell very well with this recording, but this, this is a 13-inch P-Crisp. It is a 607 is what it is. This, though, is a 617, a 14-inch edge. You can hear the differences. Now I normally put a fatter, nastier, maybe a 15, 16 inch, whatever hi-hat on this right side of me because I want it to be able to sort of stand out against the ride cymbal because I do a lot of back and forth between it. Now, if the ride cymbal is just a little too washy, you can obviously control your ride cymbal separately from everybody and just drop it down just a little bit. So you can hear that hi-hat in between. But like the snare drum that allows for extra sounds built in without buying anything extra, so does your uh, uh, 
hi-hat. Either side, really. Let's go back to it. And you do it basically the same way. You go into edit and you'll see it has this add, go into add. And again, we're still on H and R, which means head and rim. Now for this, I really only want it on the rim. So I'm gonna take that off and now I can select which part of this, because it's a dual symbol, it's a dual trigger zone, the sound is gonna be on. So I don't want it, just for me, I don't want it on the top, but I do on the edge. And you can see when I hit it, it changes from head to rim, head to rim. So I'm gonna put it only on the rim and feel free to take your feet off your pedals for a moment, because if you even like minorly step on your pedal, it switches back to head again. It switches around. So what you want to do is <clears throat> only mess with the rim. So now you can add a sound, but you can only add the sounds that they have in here to do this, at least for this part. And there are three, I believe. One is a tambourine, uh, a casbah, which is great, and a cowbell. And I put, yeah, that's it. So you put the tambourine on and maybe raise the level just a little bit to a one, so you can actually hear that when you play the edge of it, you'll also play a tambourine. See, that's great to be able to, you still have your hi-hat available to you on the top, so to speak, but on the edge is a, is a tambourine. And if you wanna really accent that, you wanna make sure that people can hear it, of course, you can turn that up to plus three. That's pretty, that's pretty there. So watch what this sounds like. only on the edge. And you still have your open hi-hat sound on the top without the tambourine. You still have your chick sound and splashes and stuff with your foot without the tambourine. The tambourine's only on the edge, which is pretty cool. And if you have two hi-hats, you can have two different sounds. So what I tend to do is put um, the tambourine on this side, and I'll put maybe a hi-hat on this, uh, a cowbell, excuse me, <clears throat> on this side. See that? So this is kind of cool because uh, you don't, I personally don't want to have a whole trigger dedicated to a cowbell. I don't use them a whole bunch, and when I do, they're often as part of a groove, so it's nice that it's in here in the hi-hat but I still have that hi-hat as a separate thing to be used on the, on the top, on the head, so to speak. But on the rim, got a cowbell. So here. So isn't that great? You can just kind of rock back and forth between the top and the rim and have the, hi and have the cowbell there, but you still have all the other hi-hat stuff that you need on the top and with your pedal, and over here as well. So it's really cool to be able to uh, have all those extra sounds, again, without buying something extra. So oftentimes what I'll do on this side, take my foot off, get rid of the, uh, the tambourine, put that down to zero just in case. I like to have on my normal side, I'm a right-handed player, so hi-hat's on my left. Um, I like to have a normal hi-hat on my normal side, so to speak so that I have the rim, I have all that expression, all that expressiveness without anything else. But over here, where I want it to kind of stand out a bit with the ride symbol and all that stuff, I do put an extra sound on there often on this side. Right, so that's pretty cool. Now, <clears throat> these are two zone uh, drums, uh, triggers. These are two zone triggers. This is a one zone. So what I did on this side, specifically for um, a TD-30 now, by the way, TD-50s have that new digital snare drum that will sense your hand on the, on the head and give you a rim click when you put it down. The TD-30 doesn't have that and uh, it does have this. You can see this X stick uh, selection. I hope you can see this uh, well enough. So you click it and then you'll have the, the cross stick sound that complements 
the snare drum that you already have in there. It knows what snare you have. This one is a 162 Super Steel. And so it knows what cross stick sound goes in there. Watch. There it is. But you have to go in and tell it, hey, I want, I'm going to be using that sound. And then you can... Right? But the thing that I don't like about that is uh, if you leave it on all the time, because you never know when you're going to use a cross stick, uh, you can sometimes trigger the cross stick accidentally by only hitting the rim when you think you're doing a rim shot or when you're only hitting the rim lightly. When you think you're trying to get a, a click out of it and you end up getting a and that's not necessarily what you want. Hear that in there? A little bit of I don't really want that in there. So what I've done is pretty much on all my kits, I have this selection off. I don't have that cross stick sound on, so I don't accidentally ever hit it. No matter how lightly I go, right? But then I don't have a cross stick sound at my disposal, but yes, I do. This is just a little PD-8 right here, and it is a dual trigger pad. It's a dual zone pad. The rim is one thing, and the pad is another. Now, what I've also done over here is, um, if depending on how many pads you have for your drums and how many drums are offered, how many sounds are offered in a given line, sometimes you only have four drums available to you as a a, as a custom drum sound or a maple drum sound or whatever it is. It has time one, two, three, four, and that's it. So if you want a fifth or you want an extra high one or whatever, depending on how many triggers you've got, you take the high one and then maybe uh, tweak it really high and take a low one and add the shell depth to extra and then tweak it really low and so you've got extra. But sometimes, like in this one, this is a custom, it's called, three, uh, uh, 353. They have five drums available to you. That's an 18 inch. That's a 16, which is number four. That's a 12 inch, which is number two, Tom number two. And that's a 10 inch, which is number one. So number three, I put over here. That is a 14 inch number three Tom. One, two, three, four, five. And I've got it over here because it's just fun that um, <clears throat> On traditional kits, things aren't necessarily symmetrical. <laughs> on a right-handed kit, which is set up to go this way, normally this side of the kit is kind of high-end, right? And this end of the kit is normally low-end. And near the two shall meet. You don't often have a high-pitched tom over here and a low-pitched one over there. I'm not saying guys don't. Bill Bruford does some really cool stuff and Kenny Arnoff has his drums all rearranged. People do it all the time, but generally it's, it's down, it's top to down. And if you're a left-handed drummer switching it up, it'll go top to down the other way. But it's fun to have a low tom on this side of your kit. To have, kind of have that available on this side of the kit. For instance, You know, just to have it over there. Drums are one of the few in instruments that can really limit you because of where things are set up. I mean, think of the highest and the lowest note on a guitar. The only place you gotta go is from what? Here to here. That's it. You got your eyes. Think of a piano here to here, but drums is like, oh my God, it's, they can be all spread out. And sometimes that can limit how you play them. It's tough to sort of get that low end sound when you're making, oh, I'll put it this way. You, know, you, got, you literally got to go oh, and come back to it. Um, or you have to learn to play it a totally different way. 
<laughs> Screw it. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. And you can work on that if you want. Go right ahead. By the way, what's really fun about having the hi-hat on this side is stuff that uh, normally you have to play open-handed or do something weird. You can play the way you normally would with right-hand lead on your hi-hat. My hands are open, but I'm not doing this. What you can hear is not as smooth because I don't practice that at all. Again, feel free to practice what you want, but my point is that um, something like Don't Stop Believing. It's right there. It's all right here, and it's 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 really easy to do. Anyway, that was just a cheat. <laughs> that was a uh, a slight aside as far as um, having the hi hat on the other side. If you have one of these double pads on this left side, you can put another floor tom on your left side. It's fun to have, but also in the rim you can put yeah the the cross stick sound and have it there all the time it's there all the time it's always over there and it's the one that complements this snare and again it's pretty easy to do you just go to instrument and hit it and you can see on here 349 is the one that's on the pad and this super stick cross stick thing, which is 246, which goes with this, is in the rim, right there. So the, the way that you do this, again, is you, um, you take this H&R off, which means right now it wants head and rim. Now it's gonna go only where you select, head or rim, not both. So anyway, you can go into here and put in your floor tom sound, but then you can go here and find out what snare you're using and then you scroll through your menu and find out the cross stick sound that goes with that snare. Or don't pick a cross stick sound that you like. You can put anything in there that you want, really. I tend to keep it with the snare, but you don't have to. Anyway, so here's the rim sound, right? And then you just scroll through, that's 246, you just scroll through and pick the sound that you want. So I'm just gonna stick with 246. But also, this is where some of the panning comes in. I tend to pan my kits a little bit, and we'll talk about that, we'll talk about that in a minute. But because you've got H&R unselected, you're, you're only dealing with the rim. So now you can actually go into your mixer, and you are only still dealing with your rim when you deselect it, right? H&R, H&R. Now it's only where you're selecting. So there's the pad. You can see it changed to the head and there's the rim. But you can see there's two different volumes. This floor tom is at 116, but the rim is at about as loud as it will go, 127, because I want it to be able to cut through and I don't want it to be low. I don't want it to get lost in a mix. I want it to be, I want it to carry. And I have also, I'll go into the pan for a second, I have also panned the floor tom slightly to the left. So out there, when I'm here and I'm listening in headphones, it sounds like it's coming slightly from this side more. Same way with this one. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna sound that way on this recording because I, I don't think I have a stereo cable coming out of this so you'll hear it stereo. Hopefully I'll get a stereo cable in the future. But for the rim part where the click I don't want the click sounding like it's coming from over there. I want it sounding like it's coming from here. So because I've deselected head and rim, I can affect the head independently from the rim. I can pick only the rim. You see it? And I can also change the panning. You can see the panning for the rim is in the center, while the panning for the head is to the left by six. Same way with the volume. 116 for the head, 127 for the rim. So that's some fun stuff right there too. And this H&R thing, this head and rim, is the secret to how you get all these extra sounds. It's the same way with this. This is a dual trigger symbol. 
a CY14, meaning it has one sound on the edge and one sound on the top. Yeah, that's a splash cymbal on the top and a crash on the edge. Now some guys, again, when they put that sound in the edge, this happens to be a 16 inch custom, which is 642. Automatically, the brain is going to put 641, which is the bow of that cymbal sound, in the bow of this cymbal. And you can do that, feel free. But I don't often play, I don't, I don't often play on the top of my crash cymbal. I don't. If you do, don't do this because you'll lose it. But there are other things that you can do that mimic that sound. See, what I'm trying to do is I want two distinct sounds out of this trigger. I don't want one. I'm going to show you what this would sound like. That's a 640, that's a 694 on top. Um, I'm going to change this. There you go. I said that symbol was a 642 or 646, I believe. There you go, 642. So this is, again, the custom edge, right? But this is the custom bow. To me, that doesn't sound different enough to waste that top part on a sound that doesn't sound different enough. And you can still, again, you can still choke, you can still swell. You can do all that stuff, but on the top, I can swell just fine on the edge. I don't need to start up here. And if I really want this kind of a sound, I just take my foot off the hi-hat and I play on the top of the hi-hat. Now, apart from the pitch being different, the sound is similar where you're playing on the top of an open cymbal. So I don't, in my opinion, having that up there on the bow is a waste of a trigger sound. You can have a splash cymbal up there, which is what I do. So I'll show you how I do it. Again, I take the H&R off. I keep that on the edge. Again, take your foot off anything because you don't want to mess up your hi-hats. But now you select the top part simply by tapping it. There you go, head. It's the top part now. So then you can go into the list and you can decide, oh, I, I want a splash symbol up there. So you can go through the categories. There's a splash. There's all these different ones. I think I said it was a 696, something like that. Um, and you can hear it too. You can mess with it with your preview button. I'm going to say 694. I don't know if that's what I was using, but <laughs> I don't remember. So anyway, I'll just pick this one. 694. There you go. So now on the top of this symbol is, a, is the edge of an 8 inch open splash. And on the edge of that symbol you'll see is, a six, is the edge of a 16 inch custom. All of which you can still choke. Watch this. You can still choke the top part and you can still swell on this and just don't hit your edge. <laughs> just don't just don't take the edge to the top and you you can swell without triggering the splash. See watch. Right? But um, so I think it's great that you can have those different sounds in there. One trigger, you've already bought it. One wire, one clamp, one arm, all that stuff, two sounds. I like that. I like to be able to have both right in there. And I do the same thing over here, except on the edge of this is, I believe, in, just in this kit anyway. Yeah, I'll bet this one is an 18-inch custom. It complements that one. And I change the weights and the brains and all that. But on top of it is a China Boy. So that's kind of where my China would normally be anyway. So on this side of the kit, I've, I've got, a, you got a lot of effect symbols going on. You still have your crashes, but you have some effect symbols too on the top. Right? 
So they're all available here, but now you've got four really usable sounds in two triggers. Now, I do have a BT-1 over here on this one, and again, I'm probably going to replace it once they come out with a dual-sided BT-1 or something like that, because I have a stacked cymbal in there right now, which is cool, but uh, that's the only sound I can get out of it. Luckily, it's velocity sensitive, so you can hear it get louder, but it's only one sound. So, um, so these are all dual triggers, pretty much. However, this, I believe, is a CY-15, and this is a three-zone trigger. Um, it's specifically a ride cymbal, so you'll have one sound for the bell, one side for the shoulder, sound for the shoulder, and then another sound for the edge. Now, uh, a lot of people, when, when, they, when they pick a cymbal, let's see what this is. This is a 20 inch dark ride. If you have your H&R selected for that, and you put that in there, the brain is going to automatically put the bell for that ride up here and the edge for that ride here. So you'll have this whole thing sounding like one ride. Um, however, you can take that H&R off and pick your own sounds. I think this one has three different sounds in it. The, the shoulder, where you're riding a lot, is a 20 inch dark ride. And of course, you can change that too. You can uh, make it a 24 inch or an eight inch or whatever and add virtual rivets and all kinds of stuff. You can change it in there. But I'm saying you're changing that sound. That's a 20 inch dark ride. But the bell, that's a 19 inch P crash bell. It's a totally different bell for, from another symbol. You don't have to stick with the bell that goes with that symbol. If you've got a favorite bell, that's the one you want to use. Feel free to stick it in there on all your kits or on your favorite kit or whatever it is. But you don't have to keep it there. And you also don't have to keep the edge of a ride symbol in the ride symbol. Now, a lot of guys will like crash on, a, on the edge of the ride. And so maybe they want it. Uh, maybe you only want it for a, that kind of kit. Maybe you want that for a grunge kit or like a, uh, yeah, for a grunge kit or something like that. But maybe you want to have another crash. That's what I did. On the edge of that is an 18 inch dark thin crash. So now I've got three cymbal triggers sitting here, right? I've got three crashes. I've got two effect cymbals and one ride that has two different sounds in it, the shoulder and the bell. Two, four, six, seven sounds out of three triggers. Not even counting my extra over there for the BT-1. Now, of course, if you do with some BT-1s, it's fun to kind of have some extra um, percussion or something like that in there because uh, you don't really tend to get much more out of a cowbell. <laughs> I mean, you can mute it and maybe tap on the edge, but it pretty much sounds like a cowbell. So that's why I put single sound uh, uh, selections into something that is only a single trigger. But so that's kind of cool to be able to put all these different sounds into, a, into different kits and still have your, uh, you know, your cross stick sound available to you. So let me just play something for a second on this silver chair C2 kit from V Drums Expressions that I've played around with a little bit. Uh, so I can show you how much fun it is to have all those different sounds at your disposal without necessarily buying all these extra triggers and all that extra money for the clamps and arms. By the way, my entire module here is filled. I've used every trigger input I've got. So I can't even add more. This is it. You know, it's not like an acoustic drum set where you can buy another cymbal, and buy two other drums, and an extra bass drum. Doo -doo -doo. Once you've kind of hit your limit of how many triggers you've got, this is what you're stuck with. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because you really only need a four piece kit at most gigs, right? 
but it's fun to have the extra sounds available like car horns or whatever that you need to really bring home a specific cover tune to really have those sounds available to you. And it's great to be able to have a cowbell all the time or a, a stacked all the time or, tam or there's another cowbell, tambourines, whatever. You can have it all over the place. So let me show you what it's like to have a lot of these sounds available to you um, to have a lot of fun with. This is a kit I made. It's not a, a V Drums Expression kit or, or, or a Roland kit. It's just one that I ended up playing around a lot with. So let me show you what we got here. Splash, crash, ride, bell, another crash, another crash, <laughs> wow, <laughs> another crash. Uh, China Boy has some stat symbol of some kind. One hi-hat over there, I don't really know what kind it is, but on the edge of it is a cowbell. I'm triggering that one accidentally. It's a cowbell. This one, it's just a regular. This, I put the, tri I put the tambourine on that one. So what I put up here, that's a stick sound. There's another tom over here with the rim click for the, the cross stick, I should say, for the snare. So there you go. So that's that's a ton of sounds in here. So let's let's see what I can do here and not totally make a fool of myself. So you hear all those different sounds in there. Lots of different sounds available to you, and that's what you can do if you get into your brain and play around with that H and R button, where you can independently control the head and rim sounds. So let me mention this part now about the, uh, the mix itself. This is just what I do. Feel free to do whatever you want. But uh, I find that when I get the drums from something like uh, V Drum Expressions or even the Roland drums that are the, the kits that are pre-programmed in here, <clears throat> the volume is all over the place. <laughs> and uh, the pannings are all over the place, especially on the Roland. And I don't really like that. And you know who really dislikes it? Sound guys. One of the nice things about these kits is that you just give your sound guy like two, two cords, two wires, and you're ready to go. Well, not really, because they can't control the volume independently sometimes, and they can't control uh, the panning and stuff like that. The only way you can do that is give them independent cords for each drum. Not everyone does that. So what I've decided to do is I sort of have all of my kits at a certain volume and even all of the instruments at a certain volume so that I can look down at this group fader right here and pretty much if they're across the line these are all in more or less where I want them to be volume wise and what's nice about that is as you change from set to set the volumes don't change that's something that drives me nuts, especially with a, a sound guy going, wow, this kit's like crazy loud compared with the last one. So you try to keep them all about the same volume. And what I decided to do, so I don't have to crank things for them, is to give them a good signal. And I also play around with the panning a little bit. So here's what I end up doing. Feel free to do whatever you want to do. In the mixer, the snare drum is normally at 120 even the edge and it's just that's the volume of the snare drum and and I keep it at this right here at this you know zero mark same way with the bass drum it's 120 same way with the hi-hat 
top and edge, those are all 120. Same way with the cymbals. They're all 120. So that they're all about the same volume and I can keep this pretty much as is. But let's say I'm playing at a place that's really concrete or something and the cymbals just are traveling too much and a sound guy goes, oh man, bring down your crash cymbals. There you go. I just drop that down and those two crash cymbals are down from 120. Everything else is the same. It's all 120. So that's what I decided to do, at least for those main sounds of my drum set. Hi-hat, bass drum, snare, cymbals. But the toms and other things, I changed that a little bit. I found that the higher sounds travel further and the lower sounds tend to get rumbly lost a little bit. So what I decided to do is back, back that volume off a little bit for the higher sounds and increase it a little bit for the lower sounds to give them some more depth. So for the top tom, it's 112. I just picked it out of the sky. It doesn't mean anything, okay? For this one, it is uh, 114. For this one, it's 116. Same way over here on this side, in that position, so to speak, it's 116. And this one over here is 118, volume-wise. And that's pretty much it for all of my kits. So as I go from kit to kit in an evening, the, vol the sound guys are going, oh my gosh, what's going on here? They're all pretty much the same sound all the way through. The 12 is that, the 18 is, the, the, is that, you know, this highest, this lowest, this one gets a little bit more volume because low sounds tend to get lost. And this one I backed off the volume a little bit because the high sounds tend to travel more. But these other, these other sound effects stuff like this, I want those to really kick. So these ones are generally louder than everything. 127, same way with the click as 127. And that's about it as far as the volume is concerned. And again, do whatever you want to do or don't do it at all. But um, I did find that sound guys like me more. <laughs> when uh, I can switch from kit to kit and the, and the volumes don't change. That's what they are. So uh, there's one other thing I'd like to show you about the mixer that I like to do for panning. And it sounds really cool on... Uh, on in headphones and on a recording is I pan the drums just a little bit to mimic real drums. This, um, the, the snare drum is always centered, always centered. The bass drum is always centered. And so are the hi-hats. I, wa I want them centered. Everything else is slightly to my left and right. This, I, the, the first tom to my left, I move to the left too. See that? Then this next position, I move two more. It's left four. Then this one, I move two more, left six. There you go. Except for this one, that rim click is centered. Remember, you can change the head and rim independently. So the rim click is centered because technically it's coming from here. Again, to the right, this one will be R2. This one will be R4. This one will be R6, just like that. This one's slightly further back, so it's R8. So when you play this, especially in headphones, you'll hear stuff slightly to your left and slightly to your right. Uh, I don't move them any more than that because you can move them way over back here and it, you won't have any sound at all on the other side. So I just move them just a little bit to give it that sort of live feel. And then when I do my sound, because it is left to right to my ear, out there it'll be reversed unless I give my sound guy the right cable. So what I'll often do is I have cables marked left and right on one end that hands to him. I have it marked left and right on the other end on my end. So I put the right in the left and the left in the right, master out and hand to him so that out there this right side for me is left side for the audience facing me. Same way with that. Left side for me is right side for the audience facing me. And that's only because I, I switch the cable when I give it to them. 
So I'm hoping that helps you get more sounds out of your kit without buying more stuff. I am hoping that uh, the BT-1 is upgraded because it's a great idea to mount it already to a drum you already have. Again, no extra clamps and brackets and stuff like that, but it's only one sound. You know, it's only one sound for one trigger, but it's also only one sound out of one input. I'm taking up a whole input for that. Meanwhile, this is one trigger, one input, three sounds, two sounds. So it's really kind of a shame that this is taking up a whole input and I get one sound out of it. So hopefully we'll get a BT2 <laughs> kind of thing. And if you already know of something that someone else makes, like not Roland or whatever, that is compatible, that mounts this way, but you can get two sounds out of it, please let us all know in the comments because that would be great. And if you want some used BT1s, I'll be selling three of them real soon because uh, I want BT2s then. I, I, I want to get as much out of this brain uh, as I can with the limitations of inputs and triggers. So anyway, uh, uh, have fun. <laughs>